Hey, Steve Gato, Certified Financial Planner and Founder of Retirement Resource Management. Today, I've got a presentation I think you'll enjoy. It's called Protecting Your Retirement from Washington. So when you think about retirement, there are really four risks that come into factor uh, or into play with retirement. And, and those, some of them are familiar with them. Probably the one that most people are familiar with is the market risk. And, you know, when you start thinking about market, that's really what everybody focuses on. That's, you know, the market's up today, the market's down today. Um, and this impacts a lot of people in retirement. The second risk that people face is an income risk. And this is simply put the risk of outliving your income in retirement. Uh, many savers rely on annuities or pensions or other vehicles to ensure that their retirement funds last as long as they do. But there are really two other risks, and that's what I want to focus on today. Uh, there's tax risk, which a lot of people are familiar with it. And if you've saved in a tax-deferred vehicle like a 401k or an IRA, you've agreed to pay your taxes in retirement. This means that any change in the level of taxation between now and the end of your retirement can impact the amount of money that you get to spend. And that's an important factor to consider. And then the last one is really the legislative risk. And, and that is closely aligned with the tax risk. Legislative risk has to do with the structure of taxation of your retirement acts, assets. You know, what is taxed? When is it taxed? And what level is it taxed? So, you know, the risk that Washington is going to change, you know, what you've planned for is a very real risk. And, and people need to consider that. So, you know, let's take a look at an illustration. I want to show you how these taxes uh, impact your retirement and, and what you can do in the future that will minimize those. So let's take a sample saver who's 64 years old. Um, he's got a million dollar IRA, hopes to live to age 100 has a 50-50 portfolio, meaning 50% stocks, 50% bonds, the equity side's earning 8%, the fixed income side, three and a half, and you know, an effective tax rate, both state and federal, is going to be somewhere around 20%. So that million dollars is going to generate about $50,000 of annual net income uh, when he's ready, to, when they're ready to retire. So, you know, if what happens now, if the market underperforms, so that equities, instead of earning 8%, only earns 5%. You know, what impact is that going to have on you? People are familiar with this because they've seen it. You know, this is what's going on today with a lot of people's portfolios. And so that income now has dropped down to a safe rate of $43,000. And, you know, people in retirement don't like to have to reduce the amount of income that they're having to rely on. But, you know, that's a very familiar scenario that people are used to seeing. But what happens if taxes go up? And so if we're looking at it, that, you know, the taxes rise from 20 to 30%. And, and this can happen in a lot of different scenarios, whether it's going from a married to a single tax filing rate or Congress decides that they're going to go back to some of the older rates that we've had, which is coming down the road, um, but taxes rise 30%. What does that look like? Well, that also reduces your net income that you will have. Both of them are important, and when they happen together, it's a double whammy that is really going to impact what you can do and the amount of income you'll have in retirement. So let's start with the tax risk, uh, which is the level of taxation you may experience in retirement. You know, there are really three directions it can go. You know, it might go lower, it might stay the same, or it might go higher. You know, a lot of people look at all three of them and, and different people have different opinions, but this is an educational video. And, and really we're gonna talk about the impact of each way. So some believers believe, or some savers believe that their taxes are going to be lower in retirement. And quite honestly, when I started helping people save for retirement 30 years ago, uh, this was what everybody thought because taxes were very different 30 years ago. You were, you were in a higher tax rate when you were working and when you got ready to retire, uh, you hoped that, they, that you'd be in a lower tax rate. You know, this is based on the way that people save for retirement. Um, the situational changes that are there are based on something that's unique to you. And this level of income you desire in retirement, whether you're filing your taxes as single or, or joint, can impact you. And, and so you know, here's what I was explaining. You know, the, the theory was your working years, higher tax bracket. Then when you retired, you dropped down to a lower one. 
you know, the reality is this doesn't happen for a lot of people anymore. You know, a lot of people wind up being in the same tax brackets. And it's really the reason for this is that um, most people don't want to see a reduction in income when they transition into retirement. Your income needs don't dramatically change once you retire. You know, you're not just sitting on a porch, you know, waiting for time to pass you by. So it's important that you understand what your income <clears throat> level is going to be in retirement, because that directly impacts, you know, the amount of taxes that you're going to pay. So are they going to be the same? You know, this is a question, you know, everybody's like, well, I think if I retire and I'm making the same income, I'm going to have the same taxes. And this may or may not be true for you. Uh, this is more common than most people think. And most people, when they do retire, wind up being at least in the short term in the same tax bracket. But, you know, what impact will this have? And, and so what impact is this going to have on your retirement savings? You know, if you've saved and the majority of your retirement assets are in tax deferred vehicles like 401ks and IRAs, then you have a retirement tax bill coming. Um, it's going to be based on things that you never even thought about when you were thinking about retirement. Um, and before I start, I want to make it clear, I'm not a CPA. Um, this, the purpose of this is not to offer tax advice. You know, my goal is to help you better understand the issues that are impacting taxes in retirement and what you may want to consider. So, you know, when you start thinking about taxes in retirement, there's two different ways that you can go about it. You know, the first time is, you know, the total amount you're going to pay. And it can be either a micro, which is looking at the taxes you're going to pay in any given year. And this is, you know, the direction most CPAs go. When you go to your CPA, they say, let's figure out how you can pay the least amount of taxes for this individual year. I prefer to look at things at a macro view, which is the cumulative taxes that you're going to pay over your lifetime. Uh, and this is important because it's not only the taxes you pay, but it may be the taxes that your kids pay on the money that they inherit. So, you know, when you start thinking about the different ways of looking at these macro analysis, um, that, that's really the total taxes. And, and I've got some things I'll talk about in just a little bit of ways that I can help you identify the difference between your mandatory taxes and your voluntary taxes. So let, let's just take an example. Uh, this is a 60-year-old, uh, has a 20% tax liability, a half million dollar IRA. It's growing at 5%. You know, what is that going to look at? Well, you know, he's going to have several things that are going to impact his taxes. The first thing is RMDs. And that, for those of you who are not familiar, that's required minimum distributions. You know, th there's an age somewhere between 72 and 75, depending on your situation where you're going to be forced to take money out of your IRAs. Okay. So that's the first thing. And then assuming that they don't need the money and they're having to reinvest it, um, you're going to pay capital gains taxes on that money. And then when you pass away, your heirs are going to have to pay taxes on the remaining one. And this quite honestly is an area that I see a lot of impact. Your kids are doing well. And now all of a sudden they've got this extra income that is going to get added to their taxable income. Uh, and it can be quite catastrophic for them, especially if your kids are doing well. And so this gives you the total taxes. So what does that look like? There's the RMD. Uh, here's the, the um, reallocated assets, the death taxes. So, you know, out of a $500,000 IRA over your lifetime, you know, somewhere around $451,000 worth of taxes. Same punitive, but you've had growth on it. There are a lot of different factors that go into that. Now, let's look at another way. You know, if you convert over to tax-free, and probably the most familiar way that people think about tax-free is Roth IRAs and Roth 401ks. Uh, there are some other options that are out there that you may want to consider, but that's not the purpose of this uh, presentation. It's really to talk about the impact of tax-free versus taxable. And so right here, we've got that same half a million dollars. Um, and when we convert it to a Roth, we're going to pay taxes. There's that 20%, $100,000. But because it's all in a Roth and it's growing tax-free, there are no taxes paid on the growth. And when you die, there's no taxes that the kids are going to have to pay. 
And so your taxes are fixed at that $100,000. So that's the minimum or mandatory taxes that you're going to have to pay uh, on this IRA. And so, you know, there's quite a difference between, you know, the $100,000 or the four hundred and fifty-one. And this right here is an, an example of a calculation that I run for folks all the time. If you go to my website, there's a retirement tax bill button. And, and you can click on that, put in a few pieces of information. It will show you the difference between the minimum tax you're going to have to pay and the mandatory taxes uh, or, or the optional taxes that you're going to pay. So, you know, so in this hypothetical in illustration, you know, we're looking at a difference of three hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars and that's significant. So understanding when to pay your taxes is an important consideration uh, when you're looking at your retirement assets. So in the hypothetical illustration we just reviewed, we assume that everything stays the same throughout retirement, that taxes don't rise. Uh, but we know that's not true because in 2026, the current tax laws sunset and they are going to go up. Or you can go from that uh, joint filing status to the single filing status and, and that can impact it. So there are a lot of things that can go into that calculation here. I was just talking about the situational one, uh, like going from the married to single. So what if Congress comes in and changes those rules? You know, that's really what legislative is all about. And, and Congress, you know, has a tendency to do this. Uh, I, I'm not endorsed by any governmental agency. I can't predict what new laws are coming out, but we can kind of get a feeling of what's going on up there. And with the debt that we've got coming up, I think we're going to see taxes rising in the future. So this legislative risk that Congress has put out there, uh, it, it's simply put by this one slide. Federal trillion federal debt is over $31 trillion. It's larger than our U.S. economy. And, and that's significant uh, because, you know, the government is going to have to address this uh, deficit. And with interest rates going up, it becomes an even heavier burden on our government. So, you know, how are they going to pay for it? They have a choice. Uh, I, I think it was uh, the Penn School of Business uh, said that we either had to increase taxes by 30% or, or by 40% or reduce spending by 30%. Now, which one do you think government's going to do? So, and you know, we've got to look at those types of things. Uh, Congress is also debating trillions of new dollars in spending. Uh, and to offset these costs, you know, the Congress and White House are going to have to deal with new ways of generating revenue. And, and one of the most... Uh, I guess current ways, and we've got something going on outside. I apologize for that little distraction there. Um, is to expand the taxes in the years coming up. You know that that's just something they're going to have to deal with. So, how do taxes rise in retirement? Let's look at the different ways that it can happen. The first is most that's most common is our tax brackets. You know, you look at those rates: the ten percent, the twelve percent the 22%, the 24%, and so forth, all the way up to 37%. Now, in 2017, uh, Congress passed and the president signed in you know, what is commonly referred to as the Trump tax cuts. Um, you know, these reduced taxes, and it was temporary for most individual income tax brackets for most Americans, but they weren't permanent. In fact, they expire in 2025. So what that means is that in 2026, they go back to the old rates. Uh, and those were higher than they are today. And so you need to be aware of that, that there is a change that's coming. So that, that's the first thing that comes into play. Um, the second one is deductions. And, and when we think about deductions, you know, if you make $100,000 a year, um, you can deduct up to $20,000 on your taxes. And, you, you know, if you have deductions of $20,000, you're likely going to pay $80,000 of, ta $80, of taxable income. But what if next year Congress passes a law and you can only deduct $10,000? Then you'd be taxed on $90,000 and your taxes go up. Uh, that's important. You know, your tax bracket didn't change, but you end up paying more taxes to the IRS uh, and to the government. So you need to keep in mind that some deductions may become less valuable to you. Uh, for example, we had kids and they're out of the house, so I no longer get the, the child tax credit. Um, we've paid off our mortgage, so there's no mortgage interest credit. And so as these go away, 
you have fewer things that can reduce your taxable income and your taxes can go up. So the third way that it can happen is by eliminating some of the benefits through things like the SECURE Act. And this is where the stretch provisions from the IRA significantly changed. It used to be, and I did a lot of planning, and now I'm having to go back and replan all these folks, um, was you would have your IRAs passed on to your kids and they'd have to take it out based on your lifetime. Well, now Congress, for most people, has compressed that down to having to take it out within 10 years. So think about this for just a second. You've got a million dollar IRA that your kids are inheriting and you've got two kids. That means each one of them is going to have to take out an additional at least $50,000 a year and add that onto their current taxable income. Uh, if you've got kids that are doing well and they're in the 28, 30% tax bracket, it's always going to be added to the top of that bracket. So they're going to pay whatever the highest tax bracket they're in on that next dollar that's coming in. And so it can leave a tax time bomb for your kids. So, you know, when Congress starts thinking about um, what's going on, it, it, a good way to look at it is to go and see what they've done recently. And over the past 12 or 24 months, we've seen Congress debate all these spending bills. And, you know, I want to be clear, they didn't pass these things, uh, which is important. And it's good that they didn't, but, you know, they're presenting them and, and they're hoping that happens. You know, with the Build Back Better bill, um, there was, a, the original version was like $3.5 trillion of spending and $2.9 trillion in new taxes. And that's significant. Um, when the bill was there, you know, Congress really, and this is a little snippet from it, there was some language in there that, that really hit home with me because I focus on retirement planning. Um, it was in respect, you know, the, the taxes that were coming in for, for taxpayers with large retirement account balances. Uh, in, in fact, it's the, their actual language they used was avoid subsidizing retirement savings once account balances reach very high levels. Now, that's real specific, isn't it? No, it's not. And, and that's intentional. Um, and so when you start thinking about it, the legislation was there saying that if you save too much, we're going to come up with new taxes on your money. And so as a part of this uh, proposal that was out there, uh, they said if, if your value exceeded a government issued limit, then the saver would be subject to a new annual required minimum distribution each year. Um, that was equal to 50% of the excess above that limit. Now, this is important because that's income that you're going to have to add to your taxable income um, and that's not going to grow. And that's going to compound the effect because you've taken it out of something that was growing tax deferred. And now you're going to have to put it into something that's taxable after you've already paid the taxes. Um, so, you know, this didn't help folks that, you know, wanted to retire early and it saved an awful lot so they could retire at age 50 or, or they live in a high cost state. You know, they didn't take these factors into account because honestly, I don't think they care. Um, they also wanted to put some limits on Roth conversions for some savers. Now, as I mentioned, most of these didn't pass, but it's important to, to hear. And there's an old saying in Washington that tax proposals never die. They just go on the shelf for future years. So, you know, when you think about it, did your retirement dodge a bullet? Yes, absolutely. It did dodge a bullet. But really, my goal here is to get you out of the firing line, to, to put your assets in a um, environment where they are not subject to Congress changing those rules on you and impacting you in a negative way. So how do we look at, you know, what happens if taxes rise? And, you know, I wanted to be fair. So basically I looked at the taxes that were out there and I looked at what the middle America pays, that middle quartile, quintile. And, and so that's the middle fifth, not, not the bottom two, not the top two, but you know, middle America right there. And there's only data points that go back to 2020. And, and so when we start looking at this middle quintile, we see a couple of things. Back in 2000, uh, we, we see that taxes were right around 28% for that middle uh, quintile. Now, when they put them in place for under the Trump ones, that was reduced to 22%. Now, looking at this, you may say, well, 
the difference between 22% and 28%, that doesn't seem like that much. However, that represents a 30% higher taxes for folks. Um, so what happens if they go back to those historic levels? And, and again, this is to help you understand the impact that legislative risk can have. Doesn't mean it's going to happen, but it is something that you should consider. So, you know, in that same 60-year-old, now same parameters, except in 26% tax liability. So here we were before looking at this with the 20%. When we look at the 26%, we see that number jumps up to that 576. So that's more than they actually had put in there. And, and so, you know, it impacted the RMDs, it impacted the growth on the reallocated assets, impacted the uh, taxes that the heirs are receiving. So, you know, what does that mean? Well, when we look at that Roth conversion, we had that 500,000, it's still at that $100,000 if we do it over the next, you know, three or four years. And so there are strategic ways to do that, to optimize it so you don't pay more taxes. But, you know, quite honestly, the difference between $100,000 and uh, 580, that's significant. Even if you pay a little bit more taxes right now, it's going to benefit you to look at these Roth conversions. And, you know, what if they go up above that? Who knows? And, and that's really what this legislative risk is all about. It's minimizing the things that can negatively impact your retirement. So, you know, how can I help? There's a couple of things. I mentioned earlier the, the tax analysis on my website, on my emails. There's a button there that says retirement tax bill. I encourage you to do that. And then I can look at different ways that we can optimize it and, and to get the most out of your tax free conversions. Um, with, with the least amount of taxes. The other thing is a book. And, and this is one of the best books that I've read out there. It's a no compromise retirement plan. Um, it's designed for savers and to understand the impact that taxes and estate transfers and all those things have on your retirement. Because at the end of life, you know, your money goes to one of three places. It either goes to your family, it goes to a charity, or it goes to the government. And so my focus in my practice is to help you uh, really optimize those first two based on your needs. So last thing right here, there are two systems of taxation in our country, one for the informed and one for the uninformed. Uh, that, that's a very true statement. And, and most people don't understand the impact that taxes are gonna have on retirement. I hope this uh, webinar has helped you. You know, I would love to be able to answer any questions that you have. So if you have questions about this presentation or you know your own personal situation, feel free to call my office, 828-559-0299. Feel free to send me an email, steve at retirerm.com. I keep my phone with me all the time, so those emails come right in. Or, or finally, go to my website. You know, I've got a lot of good content that's sitting there on my website. Uh, that can help you make great decisions in retirement. And so, you know, with that, I appreciate your time. I look forward to helping you uh, plan for your retirement. And again, if you've got questions, feel free to reach out. Thanks and have a great day.